Welcome to the Christian Pregnancy Podcast. I'm Gladys, a mom of two who has been through the struggles of getting pregnant, staying pregnant, being pregnant, followed by a challenging childbirth and postpartum. I believe that children are a gift from God and the journey into motherhood is meant to be a blessed one. But the evil one has come to kill, steal and destroy our joy and peace. And that is why so many are struggling with stress and fear in pregnancy, childbirth and postpartum. As daughters of God, Jesus has come that we may have abundant life. And this abundant life includes joy and peace throughout your motherhood journey. If you are ready to overcome stress and fear in pregnancy, childbirth and postpartum by applying God's word in your life, get ready for a peaceful and joyful ride into motherhood when you discover who you truly are and connect with your Heavenly Father in deeper ways. If you are ready to thrive and not just survive through your pregnancy, childbirth and postpartum, hop on in, sit tight as we ride together into motherhood with Jesus at the wheel. Hi, daughter of God. Today, we are going to talk about prayer over your baby while he or she is still in the womb. As a pregnant mom, one of your main concerns is likely to be the growth and development of your baby. That was certainly one of my biggest concerns, especially due to the three miscarriages that I had where my baby did not form perfectly. Now, to start off, let me say that when God created man, he created Adam, he was made perfect and there was no death or decay. However, due to sin that entered the world and mankind, we are now living in a fallen world which is no longer perfect as it should be, as God had created in the beginning. So that is why there is sickness, illnesses and deformity, because this is the reality of living in the fallen world where things are broken and our bodies are not in the perfect condition and may not function as they should have been when God first created man in the Garden of Eden. And this is also why miscarriages happen. It is simply the baby not being able to be born or continue developing normally and healthily because of some reason. Sometimes we know the reason and sometimes we don't. And all these are part of living in the fallen world where things like these do happen. We may fall ill, we may catch a disease, and things like miscarriages do happen. That being said, there's always power in prayer. We can definitely pray to ask God to intervene in any situation and ask Him for a miracle. And when we do so, we partner with God and ask Him to change things supernaturally only with His power. Jesus prayed in the Lord's Prayer, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And part of God's will as it is in heaven is that there is no more sickness and illnesses in heaven in addition to being connected to God and being with Him forevermore. So, we can definitely pray and we should pray for our baby's development to be perfect during pregnancy. Now, one way of doing this is to get one of those pregnancy books where they talk about the growth and development of the baby week by week. For example, the heart is formed in the earlier stage of the pregnancy then the other organs and systems such as the eyes, the lungs, intestines and so on. You can get any of these books or even search through the internet and find out how your baby is developing in that particular week and make it a prayer that week to pray specifically for that part of your baby that is forming in that week. And you can also speak life, speak life in Jesus' name over each of the parts that are being formed in your baby. For example, for the heart, pray that the heart beats well at the right pace and not to be too fast or too slow. Pray for the perfect formation of each heart's chamber and valve and pray even into the future that your baby will be protected from any heart disease. Speak life in Jesus' name that the heart will be healthy for the eyes, you can pray for perfect eyesight with no abnormalities such as color blindness for the corneas and the nerves to be in the eyes to form perfectly and work perfectly well. 
pray that as your baby grows up, his or her eyesight will continue to be perfect with no short-sightedness or nearsightedness. Speak life in Jesus' name over the eyes that there will be no issues at all with his or her sight in any way. For the lungs, you can pray for good formation of each part of the lungs and all the blood vessels in the lungs to carry the oxygen well. Pray that when your baby draws his or her first breath, it will be well and strong and the lungs would expand with air as he or she breathes the first breath of life. For the brain, pray and speak life that the nerves in the brain and the neurons will be functioning properly. So these are just some examples so that you can get an idea of what to pray for. You can cover it in prayer as specifically as you would like to or even you could pray generally because truthfully, God knows everything and we don't. God sees your heart when you pray for your baby. So even if you do not know all the details and specifics of what to pray, you can come confidently and boldly to ask him for help in the development of your baby in the womb. This is the first part of praying where we are only praying about the physical development. Your baby is more than a physical being. He or she is a spiritual being. That means your baby has a spirit even from the moment of conception. Your baby's spirit is joined to the physical body. We are made spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is alive in God because we are daughters of God and believe in Him and so does your baby's spirit. Your baby's spirit lives in God from the moment of conception. So when you pray for your baby, remember to pray over the spiritual aspect also. What I mean is to look beyond the physical aspects and into the spiritual aspect and pray for your baby's spirit to be well in the same way that I talked about previously in the physical. Let me give you some examples. Let's start from the head and moving downwards. Now remember, while this is all about praying for your baby, you can also pray this over your other children if you have any and definitely pray this over yourself. Firstly, the brain, the mind. Pray for your baby to have a sound mind and the mind of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16, it says that we have the mind of Christ. Speak life over the mind that the thoughts will be aligned to God's word. For the eyes, pray Ephesians 1 verse 18 which says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Pray and speak life over your baby's spiritual eyes so that they will be open to see God moving in his or her life and to see the things uh, to see things the way God sees instead of how the world sees. Also, you can pray that any spiritual blindness to be removed in Jesus' name and that the eyes might not sin against God and for God to guard his or her eyes. For the ears, in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, there is a phrase repeated a few times. This phrase is, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And when there is repetition in the Bible, we must pay attention and take special note of what it says. This repeated phrase is calling the churches to hear and to obey God's commands. Pray that your baby's ears may be sensitive to hear God's voice and commands and to be willing to obey what he or she hears from God. Just as Samuel heard God calling to him at night, pray that your child would also hear when God calls and to be quick to obey and respond just like Samuel did, to respond to God and say, Yes, Lord, speak. I am listening. For the nose, pray that with every breath in your baby, he or she will bring glory and praise to the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And yes, that includes your baby and definitely you and me too. 
for the mouth. Now, there are many verses which relate to the mouth and speech. Here are some of them. I'll read through them. Firstly, Ephesians 4 verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Psalm 19 verse 14. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Pray for your baby that as he or she grows up, he or she will speak words which are pleasing to God and speak words of encouragement to others that will build others up. Now for the tongue, pray that your baby will truly taste and see that the Lord is good, as it says in Psalms 34 verse 8. This is metaphorical and not to actually taste with the tongue to experience the sensation of taste, but it is to experience the goodness of God in his or her life, personally and experientially. This means not just knowing about God with hate knowledge. Tasting and seeing that the Lord is good doesn't mean to have a good life without difficulty or trouble. On the contrary, it means to experience God in the midst of any trial or challenges because there will definitely be trials and challenges in every person's life. Next, for the heart, again, there are many verses about the heart. The main one I like to speak on is Proverbs 4 verses 23. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Pray that your baby's heart would be guarded from the things of the world and have a heart set on God. God has also called David, a man after his own heart. So pray that your baby will have a heart after God's own heart. For the stomach, this to me personally speaks of contentment versus the desire for more because I relate the stomach to food and hunger and desire. In 1 Timothy 6 verse 8, Paul wrote that if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. This is in the context that we bring nothing into the world and therefore we also cannot bring anything out from it. That speaks of contentment, being content with what the Lord has given to you in each stage of life. Pray that your baby will always be content, thankful and grateful for everything that the Lord provides for him or her throughout his or her life. Also, you can pray that your baby would crave pure spiritual milk as they grow up in salvation, as it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 2. Let me read it for you. 1 Peter 2 verse 2 says, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Pray that your baby will grow up to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and receive the salvation that comes from Jesus alone. For the hands, the verse that comes to mind is the first part of Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, which says, The Lord will open for you his good treasure house, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. The context of this verse is that God is proclaiming all the blessings over his people if they obey his commands. Pray that your baby will grow up to obey God and that God will bless the work of his or her hands. Pray that these hands would be used for good works for the kingdom of God and be blessed to be a blessing to so many others. For the knees, the verse that I think of is Philippians 2 verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. It speaks of worship worshipping Jesus alone. Pray that your baby will worship Jesus and not the things of the world. It is never too early or too late to pray for your baby or your child's salvation, that they would come to know Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Finally, for the feet. 
In Romans 10 verse 15 it says, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Pray that your baby would be the one who would bring the good news of salvation to many people during his or her life. It doesn't mean that he or she has to grow up and become a missionary to a faraway country. But it is all about impacting lives with the testimony of our own life. As Christians, we live our daily lives and we impact others. No matter how normal our life may seem, we can be the one who brings God's light to others and God's love to others just by being ourselves in Christ and living in Him. There are so many more possibilities to pray for other than what I have just shared. What I have shared is just some examples of so much more that you can pray for. You may want to look up different scripture references of the different parts of the body and pray into that. This is just a starting example to show you a different way to pray, praying for the physical and the spiritual aspects of every organ and every part of your baby in the womb. In fact, you can pray it for yourself, your spouse, or your children, and anyone else. This is such a powerful way of reminding yourself that you are not just a physical being with a spirit, but primarily, you are first a spiritual being living in the physical world right now. After we leave this physical world, our spirit will continue to live on. So, let's invest in our spiritual well-being by praying for it for ourselves as well as our babies. Now, let's close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the dear sister listening to this. I pray that whatever that has been shared today will sink deep into her heart and her spirit, that she will be open to the new possibilities of prayer and speaking life in your name over her baby. Help her to make it a practice to pray over her baby's spirit and also over her own spirit and her other children and family members. Help her faith move and grow to greater heights as she does this knowing that you always hear her prayer and will answer her according to your perfect will. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. If this podcast has blessed you, please share it with a friend who needs it and leave a written review on Apple Podcasts. This would help this show bless more women who need to learn to apply God's Word in their lives in the motherhood journey. Also, come join the Christian Pregnancy Podcast free Facebook group and get on the wait list for the Christian Pregnancy course. The links are in the show notes. See you in the next episode and may God bless you with His peace and joy always.